this is Vanessa. Welcome to the ASEAN News Weekend's episode. Southeast Asia Women Mediator Peace Network will support Timor-Leste to become ASEAN member. After meeting with the Timor-Leste's president, Jose Ramos Horta, the representative of the Southeast Asian Network of Women Peace Negotiators and Mediators, Miriam Cornell Ferrer explained the meeting with the president discussed about the Southeast Asia support for Timor-Leste. She added, the Southeast Asian Network of Women Peace Negotiators and Mediators in support Timor-Leste's initiative to become the ASEAN member. We believe that uh, East Timor joining the ASEAN will, uh, be, uh, will, will, will be good for, mutually beneficial for both the ASEAN and, and East Timor. Uh, we know that uh, ASEAN member states are, challenge, are facing several challenges and we believe that East Timor's experience, its, uh, its history of um, really advancing, um, advancing democracy and independence uh, here for the people of East Timor is a valuable experience as well as in terms of building reconciliation and so on, we believe it will be a very good contribution to the, the body of learning and experience within the region. And we are fully supporting that. Uh, it will be a matter of time. We are, uh, we are working, we, we certainly will be doing our own diplomatic work to support the inclusion of, uh, of uh, immediate uh, full membership of East Timor in the ASEAN. In this opportunity, President of Republic, Jose Ramos Horta, urges the Southeast Asian Network of Women, Peace, Negotiators and Mediators to continue forge mediation for conflicts that happened in the region. The Southeast Asian Network of Women, Peace, Negotiators and Mediators consists of seven ASEAN countries, which are Cambodia, Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, Myanmar and Timor-Leste, to facilitate the regional peace consensus. Timor-Leste government approved the National Oil and Mineral Authority to initiate the mining activity in Timor-Leste. At the end of February 2023, the Timor-Leste's Council Ministers approved the resolution proposal presented by the Minister of Petroleum and Minerals, Victor Suarez, to initiate the mining activities in identified areas and start in the competition bidding of term of references to attribute the mining companies' right. Hello, President Samida, who is the those identified area will become the spots to develop mining industry. And recently, the ANPM made a presentation to the Prime Minister. I was there as well at that moment. What they have shown was those identified areas filled with mining resources. And for those approved areas, we can allow opportunity in the future for private sectors to compete in order to gain rights for mining exploration in those identified areas. The economic potentials in mineral resources that it have, Timor-Leste's government had approved the initiation of mining activities in all areas and allowing the National Petroleum and Mineral Authority to launch the bidding competition to attribute the mining rights in the prospecting and exploration of metallics miner, rocks miner, industrial miner, coal miner and more. Government will certify Suayano Ikusi Airport become international airport. Timor-Leste's head of Civil Aviation Authority, Eusebi Freitas, explained that the Timorese government will certify the Suai and Okusis International Airports. The Nikola Lobato International Airport has been certified a few months ago. It was a necessary thing that we should have done since the airport being used for the international and domestic purposes. This can be applied to Suai and Okusis airports as well. Freitas added up to this date the Qantas, AirAsia, CityLink, the Baltic and other aircrafts unable to operate at the two airports. As a matter of fact, both airports have not been certified with the international certificates and to allow aircraft landing. He also mentioned that Timor-Leste presently owned 10 Timorese pilots. Some of them have undergone training and will obtain an international certificate. Swai Airport inaugurated in 2017 and Dokusi Airport was in 2019. Seafood price rises in Japan in 2023. Seafood prices in Japan are going up due to surging operational costs and supply shortages. At the bustling seafood fair in Shibuya of Tokyo, that gathers 80 shops from various parts of Japan presenting delicacies like tuna, lobster and oyster, and other seafood prices have increased sharply. 
the price for a half of a grilled crab has risen by 25% to 1500 yen, compared with the same period last year while salmon rose, seafood rice bowls and grilled oyster have registered a 10-20% to year-on-year -year price increase. The seafood price surge is mainly due to the impact of rising fuel prices, which drove up to the operational cost of fishing boats and subsequent cost in packaging and logistics. According to the Japanese Miji report, the supply of mackerel, a classic local food, has been in an unprecedented shortage in recent years. Its catch across major ports in Japan is only 30% of that in previous years. Some companies will increase the price of canned mackerel again, up to 20% starting from April. China will continue to actively promote the international cause of human rights. Foreign Minister Spokeswoman Mao Ning said China will continue playing an active part in steering global human rights governance toward greater fairness, justice, reasonable and inclusiveness. She added they follow a Chinese path of human rights development, take an active part in global human rights governance and have made historic progress in promoting our human rights cause. Currently, the international human rights cause faces severe challenges and urgently needs all parties to build a consensus and enhance cooperation. She stressed the Human Rights Council is an important platform for various parties to carry out constructive dialogue and cooperation on human rights issues. The Chinese side will actively participate in the discussion of various topics at the meeting and work with the various parties to push the Human Rights Council to follow the principles of impartiality objectivity. China to become driver of global economy amid impending recession. According to Yvonne Tso, China will continue to be the driver of the global economy amid a looming recession with consumption, technological innovation and sustainability investment leading its economic recovery in 2023. Tso noted in a recent interview with the China Global Television Network that with China's latest optimization of COVID-19 response and the impact of the virus generally diminished, the country has seen consolidated momentum for economic recovery. The managing director noted that Chinese economy has become increasingly consumption-driven. She believes that high-tech industries and new energy and green industries will have the biggest potential for development. So suggested that, with a massive market and the whole country returning to normal, China will continue to provide opportunities for growth to multinational companies and countries around the world. Thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you again.